Okay, and let's see if they can, because they know what I look like. They want to see what, what Miss, <laughs> Miss, Miss Coos looks like. Is that how you say last name? Coos. Coos. <laughs> this is Heather Coos. <laughs> we just, so we're in, this is still, let me show them. We're still here. This is where we just performed. <laughs> Which was really, really fun. Thank you for bringing me out the first time, oh, first show. We had, we had, we had a blast. Like, did you like it? Like, you're the one oh put it together. What did you think? It was so much fun. The crowd was fantastic, and the venue was perfect, and everyone had this, a blast. This it venue was, was very, very nice. We were at Tilted Access downtown Lapeer. Come out! It's such a like. How, how often are you gonna have it? When's the next one? So, uh, August thirtieth. August thirtieth. Do you have any like after that planned out? Uh, September something. August 30th, September something, be there. <laughs> Bye. 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 There he is. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for emceeing, dude. You were awesome, man. I appreciate you were it. Awesome. Bye, honey. See you next time. See you, see ya. Bye, yeah. See ya. See you next time. Yep. See you next time, dude. He was a very good MC too. Did. Like I he thought did. he was He's fantastic. Well. And that's his first time emceeing. <laughs> Which is very even, yes. even more yep. impressive. Yep, yep. No, he did good. He's got a lot of enthusiasm and he mm -hmm. wants to learn everything and it's it's been fun working with him. So, and he just picked up a microphone for the first time like two months ago. Yeah, like this is, I mean, you got really quick into comedy too, didn't you? I did, yep. Like when did you actually start for the first time? Uh, January 15th this year was the first time I stepped and on stage. right now this is July 12th. Yeah, so and, six and months. And you're, you're doing like, you're doing a lot in six months. I've, yeah, I've, I've. If that, no one has told you that, it's a lot. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. I, I am one of the people that I'm not afraid to ask. And that's kind of the big thing. If you want to do something, be like, just, hey, can yeah. I be in your show? Can I be in your show? It helps that I'm perky and nice and... Oh yeah, I mean that helps for anybody. Yeah. Well, <laughs> be, be, a lot of people that aren't, so. Work hard and be nice to people exactly. and you'll, you'll see how far you can get in life. It's pretty impressive. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So we were, after the show, we were talking about, like, so you asked me, like, how did you do? And I gave her an honest answer. He roasted me. <laughs> I just said, like, I've seen you do better. Which I've probably done better, I, I have yeah. to admit, yes. Because, I, and the, the reason I want to bring it up is like, for, for one, you're the only person who have ever asked me about your performance. Oh, about really? It. And all the time I've been doing comedy, no one's ever asked wow. me how they've done. Oh, well I'm glad you're honest. I mean, like, that's why, yeah, I mean that's probably why they don't ask me because they know. You're not going to offend me. And if I'm yeah. not doing up to par, or if you think I've done better, then I want to know that because then i got to think, okay, so what did I do better before? to yeah. make myself better for next time. So if you've got a bunch of yes men around you that are like, oh, it's great, oh, it's great, when you actually bombed, that's not gonna make you get any better. That's what a lot of people will do. That's what, I don't I don't ask people how I did either. That's why I record it and I listen to myself because I know how my jokes are supposed to sound. Right. So I focus more on like, did I tell my story properly? Right. And like for, for me, the audience almost comes second. For a lot of people, it comes first. Like for um, one of the, I'm not somebody who is applicable to be giving advice for stand-up comedy yet, I, but like one of the things I um, I focused on, like this, I didn't, I didn't just do this for comedy. I applied it to like many different aspects of my life. Like if you're writing a joke, don't ask, does this work? Mm -hmm. Ask, how can I make it work? Mm -hmm. Like that's how you get better really fast. Right. Because some people will try a new joke on like multiple audiences. They're like, this joke doesn't work. Right. No, no, no. You telling it doesn't work. Like, right. But, but pe uh, people don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not insulting you. Right. I'm telling you something actually positive. That means like you can fix it. Like, exactly. It's actually the, it's probably like the most positive thing that you can hear saying that it's your fault because that means you can fix it. Right. If it's not your fault and yep. something bad is happening, that's the worst part. That means you can't do anything about it. Right. But if it is your fault, then you can fix it. That's what you want to hear. And I want honesty, so I was I was glad. It made me laugh because I didn't expect that because nobody's ever honest when you say how you did. No! So. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't say she sucked. I just said, Heather, I have seen you do better. <laughs> but, and when you're friends with comics, you never know if they're joking or not. So, That's, so yes. I was like, mm, are you serious? I mean, yeah, I think one of the, like, one of the things that makes me amazing is that I can separate when to be serious and when to right. be funny. I think that's what pe people, like, not gravitate towards me, but I, I've... In recent times, they have been more approaching me about like, what do you think of this? Or like, what's your opinion on that? Mm -hmm. But no one's ever asked me, what do you think of my set? Except for you, the first one to do that. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, I, I could have like given you more, but just, I've seen you do this exact same one, and you've right. done very, very different. It went really, really well the last time I did this with you. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mark Matos. Oh my gosh, that. Yo, was that was a show. By that, the way. Oh. I want to get Mark on this podcast too, just so we can talk about oh it. Oh my, that was. I told him, I said, you are never going to forget these rooms, you're going to love it. And the entire time he's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, I've never been in a room like this. Can we, 
Can, while we're, can we list what happened? Oh my gosh. While we were there. So the, the crowd was like heckling a little bit. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Not mean heckling, but, but helping the comics. Yeah, funnier. Don't don't yeah. help the comics. No, like we, we know what we're doing. Don't don't add on to it. We get we yeah. got this. We got this. Yeah, let us do our thing. Yeah. That was one. We had a dude. So oh. there was one dude who, um, like, because like Andrew Yang went out, oh. and this guy was drunk out of his mind. Go I, on. Like, I, when I say drunk, I mean he was. I don't think he would even know his own name. No. It was like that bad. He did not remember what happened this evening. There's no, There's no, no way. And I remember he just kept shouting, Michael Jordan, <laughs> Michael Jordan. I'm like, what is going on? Well, then Andrew, the guy was sitting like in the middle of the room, and Andrew, in the best voice, goes. Would you like to come up and sit closer? Yeah. There was empty seats close, and the guy grabbed his drink and started walking to the front, and then tripped on a chair leg, and the drink went one way, and the chair went the other way, and, and he, he went hit, the other way. <laughs> he hit and slid and turned over. And you know how when someone falls, your first impulse is, "Oh my gosh, let me help you." Everyone was like, <laughs> "Nobody." Nope. <laughs> no, nobody did nothing. Like we just saw him on the floor. And we're like, eh. but. <laughs> he didn't get up. And so that then we're all like, was, yeah. oh, he's not actually getting up. And then it was still like another 30 seconds before he was <laughs> yeah. like, is he okay? Yeah. That was that was the first thing. And then his friends came oh. in and they're like, we're taking him out yeah. and like drug him out of the building. Yeah. We, we, I never, we never saw those friends either. They're just like, we'll take care of him and he's gone. 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 Yeah. I don't know how that dude is doing, but <laughs> no, that's exactly like drink, chair, him. Yeah. Oh, all different directions. It was amazing. And, uh, oh. We had um, uh, Shane, who's actually here at the Shane Dial, yeah. yep. was here at this show too. Oh, and, um, Shane. That's right. Yeah, like so, some dude. Oh. For this one, <laughs> <laughs> people, people, people are still here. They're happy. <laughs> so the, the, this dude, like, he, he's just in the audience. He walks up to Shane. Oh, before that. And he said, no, even before that. There was more. No, remember there was the old guy, Doug, the old guy in the audience. Oh, so Doug. Yeah, Shane he tells was part a of the dick show. joke, and the old guy's like, "I got a joke for you," and oh, Shane's yeah. like. You, do you want the microphone? Right. He's like, no, I'll tell it to you. You can tell them. Oh, okay. Like what? So he's telling a dick joke. Oh. Oh. Bye bye. Thank you for coming out. Perfect. Perfect. So he's like, so he's repeating the dick joke to all of us. And then while he's telling the dick joke, this other old guy's making his way up to stage, up yeah. to the stage, to tell his own dick joke. And Shane's like. I honestly don't know what's yeah, happening right no now. Yeah, no one knew what was, it, it was pretty bizarre. Because oh. while one old dude was there, he was, so this old guy was telling a joke to the comic with the mic on the stage. Like he was just standing in the audience, he was like, I got something for you. And he was telling Shane while Shane's holding the mic, listening to this guy. And then we're like, okay. And then when he was done, the second dude walked up to the stage. And then they just start talking. He's like, what is going on? Why are you guys here? It was a dick joke free for all. Yeah, yeah it was. Oh my gosh. It was it was fun. And it was a good crowd though. It was a good crowd. They yeah. were nice. Oh, it, was it wasn't wild. like they were mean hecklers. No. Well, the drunk guy well, I don't think he would have been that way. So he duped himself. Oh my gosh. And it was just it was a perfect ending. I mean it couldn't have happened to a better guy on that night. I also met a white dude who spoke perfect Hindi. Really? Yeah. Wow. And that then, night? Yeah, the same thing. Oh and gosh. then I was like, because he came up to me, he was like, hey, like, do you speak Hindi? He's like, oh, man, I'm Afghan, so he starts going off. I was like, whoa, <laughs> right? I was like, how do you how do you know this stuff? Because he's pronouncing these words like on point. Wow. I was like, Did, like, are you just like a white Indian that we don't know about? And he was like, no, he was uh, he was in the Navy and he was stationed in uh, Chennai, India, for like years. Wow. Yeah, like he would just go back to the same place every time. Wow. So I was like, you picked up the language. Like he speaks. Very well, like it was, it was impressive. Uh, and he was actually with the, with the guy's friend who like took him out. That's how I thought about him just now. Gotcha. He was one of their friends. And see, that's what's fun about doing comedy in so many different places. You get to meet really cool people that uh, otherwise you never would have had the chance to encounter. The Michael Jordan. <laughs> oh my gosh, he was yeah. It was so good. Andrew handled him so well. He really did. What else? What else did we have? I feel like we had something else. Um, Mark Bonto said I was going to do a strip tease on stage. Oh, that was yeah. yeah. And the thing that Mark that got the most realize, applause. Yeah, it did. Well, which thank you. Yeah. But uh, 
my dad and stepmom were in the audience, and Mark knew that I was with them but didn't know the familiar relationship. And so he gets up there and he's like, we've got a comedian coming up next. She's gonna do a strip tease. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I went up behind him on stage, which you never do. You and don't I put know. my arm around yeah. him and he kind of looks at me like, what's happening? And I said, see that guy and that woman there? That's my dad and stepmom he just said I'm doing a strip tease in front of. And he's like, all right, she's up here. Here's, here's up here. <laughs> yeah, here she is. And like ran. And then one of the other comics wadded up a dollar bill and threw it at me. I still have that. It is still oh, you do? Up. Oh, I kept it. I'm keeping it. It's on my dresser. <laughs> my, mind you, this all happened in the same night. Mm -hmm. Like, within like a two hour period. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, every, so, I was the first guy to go up. Like, Mark, Mark Bonto was emceeing. I was the first one to go up. Only me and the last guy, mm -hmm. we were the only ones who were safe. I, yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Like, they didn't really do much to me. They didn't do much to the uh, the last dude either. Nope. Now, everyone in between, whole different story. It was fantastic. And when you think it couldn't have gotten worse, it got so much better. Like, we, we, it started off small. Mm -hmm. It was just like the, the guys, like, like they were throwing in like their own little heckles, like, ah, that's a good one, but I got this one better. Help. And they were, they were like, yeah, don't helping. They were like adding tags. And then I think, like, that's when, like, after that, like, the drunk dude fell, the two people walked up on stage. And we're like, this is the best show ever! Because of, so much fun. Yeah. Thank you. Have, have a good Thanks night, man. Thank yeah. you. Because that was the first night, I, that was the first time I've ever done a Mark Bonto show, and that was from your recommendation. Oh, I said they're memorable, they're wonderful, <laughs> you'll love this room. She's like, you, you, you'll you never do a room like this again. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. And I was like, oh, she was right. Like, yeah, I've right? never <laughs> done any comedy. Like, there was stuff going on every single turn. Oh, it was God. phenomenal. It's fun to go to a comedy show, but it's even better to be in a comedy show and just watching it from the inside out. It's <laughs> it Tra fantastic. Tragedy and comedy are two sides of the same coin. We were flipping that over and over again that night. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you so much. That was such a fun. Yeah, like oh. these are still the audience members just yeah, right? leaving. Like we're literally recording this like right after. Nobody everything. wanted to leave. Everyone's having too much fun. Oh man, this is your first show that you ever put up. Yes, this is my first show that I've ever produced. Yep. And so the things that we had only one comic called and said he couldn't make it. We're not yeah. gonna say names. Nope. But they did call like. An hour before? An hour and a half to uh, let me know uh, he was not making it. W one hour and a half before the show and he was like, but it gets better than that because he's not he's not coming to this show because he's going to a different show. Yeah, he dropped me for another show. It was, yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. like, hey, I can't come in, like I, I got like c car troubles right. or it's like the drive, because sometimes the drive is like over an hour. Well, we're in Lapeer and, yeah. and these comics are coming from Detroit, basically, because there's not that many comics in Lapeer. You know, Dustin Cole's the other comic that's in Lapeer and he's gonna be here next month in our show. You know, and it wouldn't even have been a big a deal if the show was in Detroit and it was an hour right. and a half before, I could have called up half a dozen guys. Because there's so many people who are just yeah. like, they, they live like right there. Fill it. But I can't call someone up and be like, hey, we have a show in an hour and a half. Can you drive an hour and a half and get here at eight? So, but yeah. you guys rallied and it was fantastic. You know, everyone oh, kind of yeah. stepped up their game, added a few minutes and we actually went pretty long. It was longer than an hour and a half tonight. We had like the group chat and I think like, People started getting on the bandwagon. That I was like, okay, if he's not gonna show up, I was like, I was the first one to be like, I'll do more time. And then I was like, okay, that's kind of selfish of me. I was like, how about we just add a little bit to everybody? Right. Yep. And then by the time we got to tonight, it was like, okay, no one gets a light. Right. Do what you got to do, mm -hmm. and then just go for it. And it actually it went so well. Mm -hmm. Like this was like for, for, for the first time producing a show. Like this was phenomenal. Was you did an amazing so job. Good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, like. I did a phenomenal job producing the show, not not during the show. <laughs> but uh, okay, at the same to like at the same token, it's wouldn't you you would rather have me tell you? Oh no, I'm yeah, like you're, absolutely yeah. no, I'm just teasing. You. Because you, that you don't want someone to just tell you, yeah, you did great when you right. when you sucked. Well, like, and I don't, yeah, exactly, and I don't want to think I did great and keep doing the same thing over and over and have everyone go, wow, she really sucks. You're not going to grow that way, you know. And I'm I'm fine with criticism. I'm constructive criticism. I'm fine yeah, with that. The, the only yeah. it's. It is difficult to give constructive criticism in comedy because so much of it is reliant upon factors that the comedian cannot control. That's what I was like telling you earlier. Is like if you if you want to help somebody improve their situation, first you have to figure out what's wrong right. and if they can influence it. Mm -hmm. Like you can't influence your audience. Right. If they're you not know, into like it or they're not laughing or you know yeah. whatever, you can't change that. That's like, not I, your fault. Exactly. Like but, so you focus on the things that you can worry about, mm -hmm. and the, if you can't control something, don't 
let it, don't, what are you gonna do? Like, let it go. You can't be upset because, exactly. like, being upset is not gonna help right. whatever you're doing. And the thing is, I mean, every comic has a bad show. Anyway. I'm not saying I had a bad show, but every comic it wasn't, has a no, bad it show. It was not a bad show. Yeah, I did, I I did an outdoor show last weekend, and mm -hmm. that was a bad show. I mean, they liked it, they had fun, but, but even after I got done, yeah, Ken's like, that didn't go well. I'm like, I know, shh, they don't know. <laughs> that is, okay, something else too, like when, when you're on the stage and you're talking about things, like mm -hmm. if, as a comedian, if you mess up a joke, mm -hmm. the audience doesn't know. Exactly. Right, it's like they haven't seen you do your nope. thing, they okay. actually don't know if that was the way you wanted to say it, right. until you're like, oh, I messed that up. But exactly. it's like, there's certain things like, if you actually mess it up, mm -hmm. don't say that. Nope. Don't be like, oh, I missed that one, because exactly. it's like, it doesn't, well, we didn't know. It doesn't do, yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. the audience didn't even know to begin with. Exactly. Like, wh why even, like... Be confident. Why? Mess up and just oh, man. It. Keep going. It's and good. There's also, I think there's an unfortunate stigma. Or, like, it's... So, w when you go out to a comedy show and there's, a, like, audiences there and, like, they're all filling in and stuff, they want you to do well, mm -hmm. right? The audience is not looking for the comedian to fail. No. They want you to do amazing because right. they're giving you their time. Mm -hmm. Like... And they want to laugh. Yeah, like they don't yeah. want to come in and boo you. No. They really don't. Like, like it, I know the comedian doesn't like it, the audience hates it even more. They don't want to boo you, they want you to do well. Right, right. But like, uh, of course, the only stories you hear about are like when people get booed off stage, because those are like, exactly. I want to hear that one. Like, right, right. You, what happened? Yeah, like, it, it's only, it's one of the extremes. Like, I want to hear someone killed, right. or when they got killed. Ex yeah, <laughs> it was, exactly. It's one or the other. <laughs> yep. No, and you learn from everything. So. <laughs> I'm so, uh, one thing I'm impressed with you is like how quickly you have come up from, and we're, like I said, we're not going to list names here, but upon talking, um, so because others have like come to me about you, and like we'll, we'll talk about it after this, but while we're here. Definitely. Because there's a lot of jealous human beings in the world. Right. And I mean, for one thing, like, it's, it's, it's difficult to like interpret this if you're not in the correct mindset as you are. But you want people in like your local comedy scene, you want them to come up. Like you don't want, if, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're learning nothing. Right, no, exactly. Right, like don't be the smartest person in the room. Like you want to have someone who's better than you so you can get better. Like mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're only like performing the set of jokes that you know work, right. you're not improving. Mm -hmm. You have to take risks, oh, yeah. right? And then when it comes to other comedians, you want people who are better than you so you can learn from them. Exactly. So like, so for someone like you, who is like, you haven't been doing it very long, but now you're doing stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. Because that means you don't have to do this for five years to get your own room. Right. To start MC. Like, mm -hmm. this is a good thing. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. Right? But it, this is not the way it's viewed. People view it as like, I've been doing it for X amount of years, I should get this. But it's like, exactly. you don't deserve it. Anything. <laughs> right. Well, and that's the thing. And there's so many cool things that I've done and so many neat experiences I've had. And there's so much I want to talk to people about, but I can't because just like that, you know, I don't want it to sound like I'm bragging because I'm not. Because it's like, this was so cool. You got to do this. You got to do that. And they're like, screw you. I'll do it if you know, whatever. And it's, yeah. And so there's a lot of stuff that I really want to talk to other comics about, but because there's, like he said, you know, there's people look jealousy. down on it. Exactly. There's a lot of jealousy. And I'm not one, I never want to make anyone feel like, you know, they're lesser than doing anything just because, like I said, I'm not afraid to ask. I've got this personality where I'll work, walk up to anybody and be like, hey, want a spunky ginger to do that show with you? And generally they're like, well, that was kind of funny. Sure, yeah, come, you know, come on my she show. Can, she can rap too, by the I way. I can rap. It's very, it's, it, it's upcoming a upcoming video is very, very impressive. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think that's something else that you also like, like bring to, because whenever someone is doing comedy, I think the biggest difference that I, I think like when I write jokes and when I'm performing, like what I think to myself is like, people don't have to listen to you. Right. Right. Like as an audience member, you have no obligation to be an audience member. Right. You could leave whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like when you're actually talking on stage, talk about shit that matters. Mm -hmm. Like you have to give the audience a reason to listen to you. Right. And I think that's lost. Yeah. With many like just performers in general. It's like the audience doesn't have to be there. Right. Like, you are glad they're there so you can practice on your art form, but there's no requirement. Right. <laughs> and I think that's a harsh way of judging it, but I was like, you, like, you have, like, it's because some people, if they're not doing well, they land the audience. I'm like, well, maybe you're just not good. Like, <laughs> exactly. It's a harsh reality. Bomb, bomb, yeah. bomb, bomb, bomb. There's one thing in common. 
Yep. So I, I like I like that. <laughs> well, but it is true, and the, and the thing is, you know, I record generally most of my sets too, mm -hmm. and I pay attention because I've got one joke that I thought was going to be a really great joke, and then it kind of got a smattering of applause, and I'm like, yeah. well, maybe it's the group, you know, and the next time, smattering of applause, I'm like, hmm, maybe it's the audience, and after I, a few times of it getting a smattering, I'm like, nope, it's me. So you got to change that, and you got to pay attention to that. But keep in mind, if it if you are the problem, then that means you can fix it. Exactly. That, oh, yeah. that is a good thing, right? Exactly. If you're the reason it's not working, that means you can adjust it. Got the power. Like, but, but people see that as a negative. I was like, no, that's one of the best things. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, yeah. And you can't just blame it on the audience and be all sour drinks. You cannot. Uh, that's our time. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how long it goes. <laughs> Where can they find you on social media and things um, like that? Find me on Facebook and Instagram, both at Heather Coos. Comedy, K O O S, Heather Coos Comedy. And the links will be in the description below if you want to find her. So thank you, Heather, for coming out. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching. Stay fresh, stay golden.